to youtube team keep it clean what's going on it's engraven here with another video hope everybody is doing really 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 good always appreciate y'all uh coming through on all the videos especially uh the questions from subscribers videos where we get different people's so many different people's different viewpoints on whatever the subject may be and y'all answer the questions y'all go through all the questions and let us always know how you feel about them so love y'all for that um just appreciate y'all for just supporting not just me but supporting everybody uh so y'all keep doing what y'all doing because y'all are really 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 special people don't forget that and, and don't let nobody ever tell you different either now um these baltimore ravens been a very very uh busy week uh, of course um it was announced earlier today that the ravens they cleared out seven hundred fifty thousand uh in cap space because they did a tiny little restructure to chuck clark's deal um that allows him to earn some more incentives uh, and Jeff Zrebic, uh, the way that he worded it, it made it sound like the Ravens were doing Chuck Clark a solid uh, for how he handled this past offseason and how he handled uh, everything. Because, we know, Chuck Clark, he had every reason to be upset. I mean, if we put ourselves in Chuck Clark's shoes, we think about it like, hey, I've been working this job for like four years. And, hey, this has been my job. But then, boom, the company that I've been working for for the past four or five years, they bring in somebody else at my position. Oh, and a much younger person? Oh, yeah. That, oh, they trying to replace me. So a lot of us would have took that as a sign like, all right, I got to go. I got to get out of here. And there wouldn't have been anything wrong with that. And with Chuck, he wanted to get out of here. He asked for a trade. Ravens didn't trade him. Uh, but then when the OTAs came out, the, the, the mini camp and stuff that wasn't even mandatory, still showed up. Showed up. He didn't hold out, didn't make no public complaints, anything like that. The most he did was put up some lyrics from J. Cole, and that was it. But he didn't make it a big deal. So shout out to Chuck Clark, shout out to the Ravens for however they worked out, whatever they worked out. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully for his sake and his bread, his pockets, he can earn whatever those incentives may be. Now, um, speaking of the secondary, uh, in this game against the New York Jets, uh, which was a nice victory by the Ravens, again, an extended preseason, so to speak, um, they took some blows. And the blows that they took uh, well, both on offense and defense. Of course, on offense, uh, Jawan James, um, he suffered an Achilles injury. He's done for the year, but in the secondary, the Ravens lost Kyle Fuller. Uh, so he is done for the year. He was expected to be their primary slot cornerback um, for this season. And then, of course, with Marcus Peters still in transition to come back, uh, he stepped into a role on the outside as well. Um, but now Kyle Fuller... Uh, his season is over with the Baltimore Ravens. They placed him and Juwan James on injury reserve. So that opened up two spots on the Ravens roster. Now, very interesting uh, because this move, um, to me, it gives us a couple of indicators on how the Ravens may go, may be moving forward um, because they, they have two open spots on the roster, but they signed a veteran cornerback today. But, and that's TJ Carey, who played for the Raiders, who played for the Browns, um, who played for the Colts too, but um, they didn't sign him to the active roster. They signed him to the practice squad, and I thought that was very interesting. I, I just assumed, I just figured, all right, whenever they do sign a veteran cornerback, uh, and it uh, looks like it's not going to be Jimmy Smith, but because uh, I know a lot of Ravens fans were hoping for a reunion or something like that, uh, but I was expecting when they did sign a veteran cornerback that they would sign that veteran cornerback to the active roster to essentially replace uh, the roster spot that opened up. But they didn't. So Ravens, even though they signed TJ Carey, they still have those two roster spots that are just sitting there waiting, waiting for somebody to take them. Um, so whether they're going to promote somebody from the practice squad, I don't see that because with the practice squad, the reason I don't think they're going to promote somebody from the practice squad is because the practice squad gives you such an advantage because you can call them up multiple times during the season before you actually have to uh, promote them to the active roster. So I think it's three call-ups, and I think after the third call-up, then you have to either put them on the active roster, or if you want them back on the practice squad, then you have to release them, and they have to clear waivers, and then you can sign them back to the practice squad. Um, but I feel like the Ravens will want to use as much roster flexibility as they possibly could with practice squad guys. So they would call them up for a couple of games like they did with Steven Means um, in the Jets game. They may use that call-up for a game, but they're going to exhaust all the call-ups. Well, I would expect them to exhaust all their call-ups of a practice squad player before they actually put him on the active roster. Mm, wow. That, that, I felt like that was like a lot of explaining. I feel like my head's about to explode and become even bigger than it already is. Anyway, um, TJ Carey. 
Uh, let's look at uh, what the Ravens had to say. Clifton Brown, this is straight from Ravens.com. Um, he said to bolt to the secondary depth, Baltimore signed cornerback TJ Carey to the practice squad. The 32-year-old Carey played 11 games with the Colts last season, had 23 tackles and a fumble recovery. All right, so we know, again, <laughs> he's not expected to be this lockdown corner, this, uh, oh, this is the Ravens answer at cornerback. But not even the article, but more so the way that the Ravens have moved, that kind of let me know some things on what to expect moving forward for now. Um, what, what I mean when I say that is the right, they didn't sign him to the active roster. So I thought that was significant because he's on a practice squad. So it's not even a guarantee that he gets called up for this game, uh, against the, the Dolphins on Sunday. Um, but that would lead me to believe, and especially with how before the game on sun, last Sunday, he was running up and down the steps in the stadium and whatnot, and he's back. But again, Ravens were like, ah. Uh, they, and I'm, I'm glad they did it because it obviously well, it worked out for him, not for Kyle Fuller. But with Marcus Peters, I think this will be an indication that he is back. My, my opinion, we, we haven't heard anything yet. They still got to practice later today. And then, of course, Lamar and Rashad Bateman, they're going to talk to the media and whatnot. But um, it would give me an indication that Marcus Peters is like back back and is going to play. Um, it also would let me know, again, that Brandon Stevens, he's going to continue to get an in increased role, probably in the slot. Um, but it would also let me know that the rookies, Jalen Lamar Davis and uh, Pepe Williams, that it's their time as well. So with them not putting TJ Carey on the roster, I think that this just means like, hey, we got some guys that we know about. I think it means Marcus Peters is going to be playing. Uh, and I think it means that the, the, the young guys, Brandon Stevens in his second year, and then, of course, Pepe and Jalen uh, in their first year, I think it just means that, hey, we're we going to give those guys a shot. TJ Carey, thank you for coming in. You'll be on the back burner, but we're going to give our young guys an opportunity to do this thing. So, I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens, but that's what it's looking like to me. Um, so we'll see. Now, uh, and I think with Marcus Peters, I think they may have been playing it extra safe because I, I wonder, one thing I wonder, if, if this game would have been being played at a different stadium, different turf, on a different field, and not in rainy conditions. Because first off, it's, it's known that the Jets, they have a bad turf. They got a bad field. It's, it's, already, in bad, it's already a bad field. A lot of injuries happen there. Um, that's known around the league. But then on top of that, it was raining too. So I wonder if the weather wasn't what it was and the game wasn't where it was, then if Marcus Peters would have played. If they would have been like, all right, Marcus Peters, you're good to go. I think that's a real possibility. But now Ravens, they know their stadium. They know their field and whatnot. So I, I think he'll play this week. Again, based off of the way that they did this signing with T.J. Carey. But we'll see. I have been wrong in the past. I will be wrong more in the future. And, hey, so who knows? But we'll know on Sunday. And maybe even this week we'll start to get little indicators based off of reports that we get from Ravens practice. Anyway, team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Um, and we'll just see how this thing shakes out. Hopefully, um, no more injuries. But, again, remember... Ravens, uh, they're going to sign two more people. They're going to bring two more people in. Who those people are, no clue. I, I have no idea. Um, but they got those two roster spots sitting there. And Ravens normally don't just let roster spots just sit there and go to waste. So it's just a matter of seeing when and who ends up filling those roster spots. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Again, keep being the, the, the great people that y'all are. Uh, appreciate your support. Appreciate just your positivity. Uh, and don't just bring that positivity here, but take that positivity uh, outside too. With your friends, with your family, with your coworkers, with whatever and whoever. Because uh, somebody needs it. Because everybody got their own thing that they're going through. Everybody got their own thing that they're struggling with. Everybody got something that they're dealing with that you don't have any clue about. So... What you do, what you say, whatever actions you take with whoever you engage with and interact with on a daily basis, it makes a really, really big difference whether you know it or not. Love y'all. We out.